want to start by telling you a story, a personal story. Um, when I was in fourth grade elementary school, I was staying home alone, and I was watching TV in, in the bedroom. And all of a sudden, I heard a sound coming from the kitchen. So I wonder what it was. So I peeked up, and uh, I um, checked where the sound was coming from. And to my astonishment, I found a big rat climbing up the window curtain in the kitchen. And I was shocked. I was alone. So I quickly shut the door to the bedroom, and I locked it, and I started to hear sounds. It was as if the rat was chipping off the wooden door. So I was, I was panicking, and my heart started to beat fast. And I realized that this place wasn't safe for me to stay. So I decided to go outside through the window, and there was a balcony connected to it. So I went out the balcony, and it was connected to the living room also. So I started to think of an escape plan. And I thought, oh, if I run through the living room, there was an aisle which headed to the front door. So if I just can run as fast as, as, fast as I can to the front door, then I could, I could finally escape from my house. But there was this one problem. On the right side of the aisle, there was kitchen. And there was a chance that I might bump into the rat. So I, um, I thought what to do. And thousands of times, I simulated inside my mind, how am I going to escape from my house? And I finally decided to to run as fast as I could through the living room, to the aisle, to the front door. And the moment I uh, opened the window and I, I decided to take my first step. But soon I realized that I couldn't move, really. Literally, my legs were paralyzed. I couldn't move. And so quickly I had to withdraw. And I could think again for plan B. But to my disappointment, I didn't have any plan B. So what I did is I started to cry outside in the balcony. And um, I cried. I I cried. And at that time, I was living on the 10th floor of, of the apartment. And I had a friend who was living downstairs on, on the 9th floor. And in the, in the balcony, I cried out, help me, help me, there's a rat in my house. And I was screaming out in the, um, outside in the balcony. And because I was so loud, uh, my friend's mother, she came out to her balcony and she screamed, what's the matter? And I told her what happened. And soon she came up, she was holding up a big basket in the balcony and she said, drop the keys. And I did. Somehow I, I dropped my keys. And a few minutes later, my friend, she came to my house. And with one hand, she had a big broom. And on the other hand, she was eating a corn. And by her help, I was able to come out of the house, finally. And that was the rat, in, the rat incident uh, ended there. The reason that I'm telling you this silly story is that today I want to talk about fear. Yeah. How fear could affect your physical body. I actually experienced that my legs were really paralyzed. I couldn't move. I wanted to move, but I just couldn't. And that's because of fear. And today I want to talk about that. And the passage is from the first Samuel, chapter 17. Now it's a whole past, it's a whole chapter, so I'll just briefly explain what's it about. It's a well-known story, story of the battle of David and Goliath. You all know the story, right? Now there was a war battle between Israelites and the Philistines. And on the one on, on one mountain, 
the Philistine army encamped on the top of the mountain, and on the other mountain, the Israelite army was stood on the, on the mountain. And in between the mountains, there was a valley. And this um, a warrior, a champion warrior, who was named Goliath, he was about nine feet tall, which is over two meters, huge. He would come up, because he's the leader, he would come up from his army, and he would suggest to the Israelite army to fight one-on-one -on -one battle against him. And he would defy the name of God of Israel. But for 40 days, he would come up to suggest fight. But no one from the army dared to come forward to fight against Goliath. You know why? Because they were trembling in fear. Now let's um, have a look. Okay, verse 11. It's, um, okay, shall we read it together? First Samuel chapter 17, verse 11. One, two, three. When Saul and all the Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now, when I when I when I read this um, verse, I was able to truly identify myself with with the Israelite army because I knew how that felt, and I knew it wasn't a lie. Really, they were trembling and they were paralyzed. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't think right because of fear, and I understand that. But. I found something interesting because this passage is about a battle of Goliath and David. Now for Israelite army and David, for both of them, Goliath was the object of their fear. They feared Goliath. But if you see, if you see the reactions of Israel army, they were paralyzed. But David was different. He reacted differently from, from, the, from other um, Israelites. He actually fought against Goliath. And that was very strange for me because, oh, how is this possible? Because David, the young David, must have felt fear same as the Israelite army, but he acted differently. So I wanted to, uh, so I wanted to learn, and I wanted to find out why, how that was possible for David. Now, David overcame fear because number one by remembering God's deliverance in the past. Now let's see, let's read the passage. It's a long passage. Um, I'll read it for you, okay? But David said to Saul, what is your to keep his father's sheep? And when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he was defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, I will deliver, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Now David, as a, as a shepherd, his, his job was to protect his sheep, right? Protect his sheep from the wild animals. And when he had to fight against the lion or the bear, he actually had to risk his life to protect himself and also the sheep. Whenever David was in danger, God helped him, and God delivered him. God saved him from the danger. Now, David, because he had so many experiences 
when he met Goliath, the object of his fear, he remembered God. He remembered that God will help me once again from the hand of this Philistine. Now let me show you an illustration. Sometimes, often, you see this well? It's a shadow, right? Shadow. And sometimes we say um, uh, fear is like a shadow. Fear is like a shadow. And sometimes shadow, the fear gets bigger. Sometimes smaller, but it gets bigger. And when fear gets bigger, what happens? We are overwhelmed by it. Sometimes we are overwhelmed by fear. What would you do in this kind of situation? In your life, the fear, fear got bigger and you were overwhelmed by it. What would you do? What would you do to solve the problem? How would you get rid of the, the shadow or the fear in your life? Anyone? Very simple. You pray? Anyone else? What will be the solution to get rid of the fear? Get rid of the shadows? You're right. Just turn on the light. And the shadow will disappear. It's simple, isn't it? David, when David remembered God's deliverance, it's like, it's as if he's turning on the light. And God is like, God is like a light. In God, there is no shadow, there is no fear, because light casts away darkness, the shadow or the fear. So by turning on the light, it is remembering God's deliverance in the past. Number two. David overcame fear, number two, by offering his personal assets to God. What does that mean? Okay, I'll read it again. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, and then put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch, which he had, and his sling was in his hand. Then David put his hand in, this, in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. Now, because David was a good shepherd, he would practice some shots every day. Because he had the responsibility to take care of his flocks. And because that was his only weapon to fight against the wild animals. So imagine, imagine how many times that David would have practiced in order to be an expert slinger. Yeah? Now at that time, the Israelite army, they were the professional slingers. Actually, in Judges, it's mentioned that there were about 700 expert professional slingers in the army, and it says that they, they, they didn't even miss a hair. That means they were very professionals, experts in slingshots. That means probably the, the soldiers in the Israelite army were much better slingers than David. Their skills were beyond David. But what happened? What happened to what happened to the Israelite soldiers when they faced Goliath? What did they do with their skill? It was useless. Why? Because they trembled in fear. They couldn't use them. It was useless. Although they had excellent skill, they couldn't use it in the real fight. Whereas David's skill was not perfect. He was a good slinger, but it wasn't a perfect one. But still, David offered his skills to God. He asked God to use them for his glory, use them for his battle. 
Um, and another illustration that I will do. Let's say this is David's hand. This is God's hand. Okay? Now, this is five stones and a sling, right? This is what he got. This is his skills, his talent, his assets. And he's giving, giving, offering it to God. He's saying, God, use these six skills for your victory, for your glory. And God receives them. And what does he grant? He grants victory. Because David offered his skill to God, God used them and gives victory. So that's how David overcame Goliath. Although he feared, but he was able to overcome Goliath. Number three. David overcame fear, number three, by proclaiming that the battle belongs to God. Now, let's read the verse. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Now, before going to battle, what what did David do? He proclaimed to all the assemblies, which is the Israelite army, also to Goliath, the enemy, and also to himself, that this battle belongs to God. It's God's fight, not mine. And by doing so, it's like, what's he doing? Now let's say this is, Goli this is David and this is Goliath. It's not a fight against David and Goliath. He's putting God, which is the light. So it becomes by proclaiming that, he's saying, this battle is not between me and Goliath. It's the battle between God and Goliath. Same as the matter of fear. If you're fighting, are you overwhelmed by fear in your life and you want to battle but you're paralyzed? You can't do anything about it? Remember how David, how David reacted. Learn from him. Remember God's deliverance in your life. Offer your skills, your talents to God so that he will use it for his victory and proclaim that the battle belongs to God. He will fight for us. It's not, it's not me. It's not us fighting for ourselves. It's God fighting for us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what are you afraid of? I, I was afraid of rat, right? But many things still. I, I, I have many fears. I know that you have fears in your life. What are you going to do about it? How are you, how are you going to overcome the fears? in your life. I hope and pray that we will be able to learn from David and apply these things in our daily lives. Amen? Let's pray.